<clears throat> Tour of Antalya Stage 1 was a pretty flat affair, bit of crosswind action, but nothing too crazy. Antalya is a classic, like, UCI 2.1 race in Turkey. Fair few pro Conti teams, a couple Conti teams, no World Tour teams. So we've got, like, Androni, uh, Uno X, uh, Elo, Eolo Cometa, Bingo, and some others. So, you know, they're a pretty stacked field, to be honest. Um, Jakob Muratchko is there. Same with like Matteo Malucci and there's some other people as well, Samuel Gaze as well. Decent, decent turnout. Anyway, 3k to go. Uh, watch on your left, you've got a pr I think it's a crosswind basically across because everyone seems to want to go on the left hand side of the road, and that's where Gazprom are. While well, you need bin goals and the luminous yellow are there as well. Elo Cometa are just behind them as well, sort of. Uh, just protecting on the front. There's a sort of a, an attempted break here, but it was a big headwind, like massive, massive headwind. So chance of that happening, very minimal. Aolo Cometa decide it's time to chase it down there. Gi Giovanni Lonardi, who won GP La Comunità Valenciana, um, which is a 2.2 in Spain a couple weeks ago. Um, I made a video on that, but unfortunately it was taken down. But this this stage, you know, it was um, it seemed pretty hot on paper. Like, you know, the normalized powers were decent. Um, Ma Malalucci, uh, Malicelli, sorry, had his power data on. Um, however, it didn't look like it was uh, very accurate. So I decided it was best not to use it because his sprint at the end didn't seem to be very powerful. Anyway, Aono on the front really dominating this. And I think it's important to realize that on the stage like this with such a big headwind, it's quite easy to go on the front, burn all your riders, but actually have no one left for the finale. But at the same time, if you get caught too far back, there's potential for crashes because it's not crazy wide. You can see the person there hopping on the sidewalk. It's all just a little bit of craziness. And I think it's best sometimes to sort of just be in the bubble um, just behind where the guys are leading out. Obviously, that's easier said than done. However, it really does go to show that if you have a great lead out team, then it really helps on a stage like this. So at the moment, they're going over sort of a speed bump. You can see there's a lot of fighting for the left. And I just want you to keep your eyes on the left because it's about to be a huge crash. Watch the... Um, Watch the rider who's like a couple wheels back who rides for Novo Nordisk. He's about to get whacked into the pavement, you can see here. And then basically this causes the crash. He then bounces back and causes a huge crash behind. And this leads about 20 riders on the front. And it's really important now that they like don't hesitate or anything and just lead it out. But the, obviously the issue is some teams get a bit too excited. You can see Alperson here a bit too excited. Everyone's sort of a bit confused as to who's going to take it over. Gazprom come strong on the left hand, on the right hand side now. Um, but actually, Lauk for Bingo, well, only Bingo's, he turns up, and, or Bingo's Palace House, they're now called, and he turns up on the left side and launches it really, really early. Strain his wheel with Malicelli, uh, who's looking really strong, and Moretzko had to accelerate to get on Malicelli's wheel. And then as soon as Malicelli launches off Lauk's wheel, uh, Moretzko tries to come round him. But to be honest, he just had too much speed. And Moretzko having to accelerate onto Malicelli's wheel, I think then needed a little bit of time to recover in his wheel. And so didn't launch as early as he could have done. And I think Mrachka probably was the faster sprinter in that situation. Um, we'll watch a couple of replays. It's really interesting just to see exactly how it panned out. Uh, but I think it was one of those sprints that was very chaotic. And that Lauk, I think, in some ways was also looked really strong. Um, like, But I think obviously just went a bit too early. But sometimes you can spring a surprise. And I think sometimes it's worth it if you don't think you are the fastest sprinter or you know physiologically that you're actually really good on a long sprint not so much of a short sprint it can be good to go early and I think I think Lauk did relatively well going early here um, and potentially uh, you know on a different day with a tailwind etc etc could have got the win but anyway here are the here's just the the highlight straight away from the head on not a great angle but you can see it was super super close on the line uh, on the bike through Malicelli got it um, for Gazprom Risvelo. And you can see on the right hand side, Lauk goes super early. Malicelli's already on his wheel and Moretzko now has to accelerate to get on his wheel. He's the tiny guy for Alpes and Fenix um, on the right hand side of the screen. Matt Gibbs in the center is doing a lot, pushing a lot of wind, not really behind anyone. He comes around Enrico Zanoncello, who is uh, the um, Variani GSF rider. But you can see Moretzko comes out the wheel and he's so aero, which I think on a headwind sprint, it's probably quite good. And in some ways, if he'd let out, it actually could have been quite good because people just wouldn't have got to drop it. Here's the helicopter footage. Again, you can just see that Moretzko had that sort of last sprint just towards the end and only missed out. And I'd say that's a classic Moretzko sprint. He was often a bit like Viviani or someone who really comes quite good from, from, from further back and isn't one of those people who, you know, they're like a long sprint, but have that little surge just at the end. While other people, I think, Definitely just like taking it on from the front. Um, and I think, you know, maybe Mrechka could mix it up a little bit because I think because he's so small on the front, it, him, you just get no draft, uh, which means that if he is dropped off, like you're in real trouble because you need to get around him 
straight away because otherwise you're just eating wind um, and he's going to be spraying full. So again, just watch on the right hand side. I think it's just Malicelli, um is straight on Marechko's on um, on Lauk's wheel. So look here, he comes across straight away and is on his wheel there, while uh, Marechko is further back, has to accelerate through two or three gaps on the left hand side to get onto Malicelli's wheel. And I think that really tires him out. And then you can see here, like he's chasing. Uh, Malice. Malice is just a little bit like half a second ahead at all times. He like goes to the gaps a little bit qu uh, quicker and that's really what costs Marechko the win in the end. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this little video and we should have some more updates for the rest of the week.